Hi everyone, welcome to my next video in the Swift Education curriculum. Today we'll be going through lesson three in the series about building the clock app. To find this lesson, go to swifteducation.github.io, follow the links through teaching app development, then on to level two clock. And today we'll be going through lesson three. You'll want to download the Xcode project and I've already done that and I'll take you now through the delegates and delegation presentation. So Swift and Coco have this concept called delegates and delegation. Basically it's all about how to get your different objects to talk to each other in a well-organized manner. So it's quite often the case that one part of your app will need something to get done for it. However, it doesn't make sense for the logic to belong in that particular object. And so it uses a concept such as delegation to pass off this responsibility to another object. And it's quite um, parallel to delegation in the real world. When you need something to happen, but you'll delegate it to a subordinate to do it, if you were a manager, for instance, or in this example here, you want a pizza to be cooked, so you ask a chef, hey chef, uh, please make me a pizza. And the chef doesn't know how to make a pizza, and he delegates again to a pizza chef who does know how to make a pizza. And uh, in the end, a pizza gets made and everyone's happy. In iOS, here's, um, here's an example in the world of iOS iOS wants an app to run. Your app says, I'm just an app, I don't know how to start and stop. And so the app asks its delegate, hey, can you run for me? And the app delegate knows exactly what to do. Here's another example. Say you've got a pig of you. Now a pig of you knows when a row gets selected, but it doesn't know what to do when a row gets selected. So it asks its delegate, now, its delegate could be any object. And this is nice and generic. In fact, it means that the pick of you can be reused many times. Now, its delegate is anything that conforms to the UI pick of you delegate protocol. And typically, this would be one of your custom UI view controller subclasses. And when you adhere to this protocol, you then become eligible to become a delegate. Another way to think of delegates is a delegate protocol is like a socket and a class that you have made that adheres to said protocol is a plug that fits that socket. And so a UI pick of view has a socket for a delegate and your class can plug into that if it adheres to the correct protocol. And that's it for that presentation. Now we'll go into the Xcode project. Let's open it up. Okay, let's run the app. Here we go, the app has the uh, current time. As you can see, it shows 9.39, which matches here. Let's send the app to the background. Now on a real device, you just hit the home button, but the way you can do the home is go to hardware, home, or command shift H, command control H rather. Now let's wait for the clock to progress. Okay, let's bring the app to the foreground again. And we'll see that it still shows 9.39, whereas the real time is 9.40. So if you double tap Command Shift H to close the app and then go back to the app, you'll see that it now shows 940 as it should. Now this is because when we last left the app, the time was only getting updated here in the view did load. And view did load only occurs once when the view controller is initially loaded. So when you send the view controller app to the background and then bring it to the foreground again it doesn't need to reload the view controller so view did load isn't called again so let's go through how this all works 
This view controller inherits UI view controller. And the way object oriented programming works is that if you inherit a class, you get all the features of that class, all its functions and variables, and you have the opportunity to override them. So here we've overridden view did load. This is made quite explicit in Swift that it never was in Objective-C through the use of this keyword override. And the first thing we do in our new version of view did load is actually call the original version that we inherited from UI view controller. So super is short for superclass. The superclass in this case is UI view controller. And we're asking the superclass to do its version of view did load. And then immediately after that, we do our own version of it. Now UI view controller has a bunch of lifecycle functions that I'd like to go through now. So command shift zero brings up the documentation. And let's search for UI view controller. Now let's go through some of the lifecycle events that UI view controller has. View did load is the uh, most popular one. And this is the one that you should already be familiar with. This only gets called once per view controller and it is called just after the view is loaded into memory. The next ones you should be familiar with are view will appear and did appear and will slash did disappear. Now when a view controller is going to become visible, view will appear is called and during an animation, such as when a view controller is pushed onto the navigation stack, will appear is called just before the animation starts, and did appear is called as the animation finishes. Conversely, will disappear is called on the previous view controller that is being replaced, just as the view, um, animation starts, and did disappear is called just as the animation finishes. Now the only wrinkle with this is with user interactive transitions, such as when you swipe from the left hand side of the screen and swipe to the right to do it to do a back navigation. And if the user swipes a bit, but then swipes left again to cancel, it is possible for the previous view controller to get a will appear and then a did disappear with no corresponding did appear and will disappear. Also for the view controller that is currently top of the stack, it's possible for it to get a will disappear. This happens just at the start of you swiping from the side, but then if you cancel it, it'll go straight to did appear. So let's have a play with hooking into view did appear. So we'll go back to our class and uh, first thing that's a good idea whenever you override anything, unless you've got a good reason to, it's a good idea to call the super classes version. Now let's move all this code out of view did load into view will appear, view did appear and run the app. Okay, it says 9.45 p.m. I'll do Command Shift H to move the app to the background. Great, it's now 9.47. Let's go back into the app. And as you can see, the time didn't change. Now this is because view did appear isn't triggered when you set an app to the background and back to the foreground. This is because view did appear is only relevant within appearances within the scope of your app. So if you push a view onto a view controller, if you push a view controller onto a navigation stack or pop it or display a modal view controller, any of those kinds of things within the bounds of an app, view did appear will be triggered. However, things that are system scoped, such as moving your app to the background, view did appear doesn't really apply in this situation. So we're going to have to trigger this code from a different part of the app. So let's dig around and find another part. Let's look in app delegate. Now there's only ever one app delegate in your app. And your app delegate is your class that fulfills all the responsibilities that are necessary for an application to run at a basic level. And 
it has to adhere to two protocols, UI Responder and UI Application Delegate. Now, the only one we're really interested in at the moment is the UI Application Delegate. This is a protocol which defines what it means to be an app delegate. And to be an app delegate, there's a bunch of functions that you're, al you're allowed to hook into. Now, here's an interesting one. Application did become active. That'll probably be relevant for our time, but there are also others. Your application delegate could be notified when your app is running low on memory, or it could be told when the status bar frame is about to change, or user notification settings just got registered. Many, many things. Now let's play with breakpoints to see when these various functions get called. So application will resign active. We click there to make a delegate, a breakpoint rather. Here and here. And this one for good measure. Let's see how this goes. Now the app has stopped. It has hit our breakpoint. Notice it's hit here, even though the breakpoint was there. This is because I put the breakpoint on a little bit of a vague piece of code. This is the function um, declaration line, whereas the body of the function is where code actually executes. Xcode was smart enough to know what I really wanted it to do, and it's stopped pretty close to the spot. Now, application dead become active is one of those app delegate methods that gets called on initial startup of your app. So we'll click here to continue the app running. And nothing else, has, none of our other breakpoints are being hit. Let's run, put the app to the background, Command Shift H or Hardware Home. And another breakpoint is being hit. Application will resign active. This one gets called whenever you move the app to the background, clearly. And also application did add enter background is also called. Let's go back into the app. An application will enter foreground is called. As you can see, these breakpoints are very helpful things. And also did become active is called. Okay, now you've seen the results of putting breakpoints on all these methods. Now, we need to decide which method is going to be a good one for updating the clock. Now, it's a toss up between these two. Did become active is called every time your app starts, as well as every time your app comes back to the foreground. So it gets called double duty. However, will enter foreground isn't called on the initial startup of your app. However, it does get called on subsequent re-foregroundings of your app. Now, the drawback to the did become active is that because it's called at the initial startup of your app, your clock might not be all set up and configured and ready to update by that point. However, however, will enter foreground, since it is not called on the initial startup of the app, you're fine to assume by this point that your clock is all set up and ready to go and ready to re-update. So we will be hooking into application will enter foreground in the next lesson, and we will make the app delegates, application will enter foreground, tell the view controller, hey, it's time for you to update. One thing that's um, important to keep in mind here is that the app delegate isn't a dumping ground for all your code. So it's a violation of the principle of violation of separation of concerns for the app delegate to be concerned with updating a clock. We should keep the app delegate as skinny and minimal as possible. So next lesson, we'll have to think of a way to get the application will into foreground to tell the clock view controller to update its clock in a very, in a way that doesn't violate the separation of responsibilities pattern. All right, thanks for watching.